हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई हैव इन मूड इन दिस वीक ऑन सी प्रॉब्लम पीक्स इन एन आरे इफ यू वुड हैव वॉच्ड जस्ट सिंपल वन क्रैश कोर्स ऑफ सेगमेंट्री एंड अगेन दैट्स जस्ट टू आवर्स सिंपल सिंपल मर्ज शॉर्ट काइंड ऑफ अ क्रैश कोर्स इफ यू वुड जस्ट हैव वॉच्ड इट दिस प्रॉब्लम वुड हैव बीन अ केक वर्क फॉर यू यू वुड हैव इंप्लीमेंटेड दिस एग्जैक्ट सेम प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ ऑफ इन दिस वी गिव यू अ टेम्पलेट जस्ट टू लाइन चेंज यू आर सॉर्टेड 15 minutes your hard problem would have been done let's start off again that was spoiler but uh, you would know with the heading itself it simply says that you are given an array arr and a peak in an array is defined as if that element if that index value is greater than its previous and next element in the array which means i can say an index i is a peak if arr of i is more than Ar of i, I minus one and Ar of i is more than Ar of i plus one. Then that Ar of i is the peak element in that array. Now I am given an integer array nums and a two D array called as queries. What the queries say? Query says that query if the value is one, which means I have a query from L to R. I have to tell that in a sub array from L to R how many peaks are there. Same way for a query two, I have to tell if I update the index with a the value then. What will be again? I I just update. Add this index. I will update with the specific new value because of updating the updating value for sure. The p can change. Now with this format of queries itself, there is a big hint that you could have applied your fragmentary or segmentary because it's simply saying find the number of peaks in a range. Update the index. It's a point update. Update the index with the value. even if they would have given you a range update still you could have applied the same formula which we will okay, obviously it's simply giving a very blunt flag it's a green flag but uh, i think that we can understand the green flags not red flags but yeah uh, then we can just understand okay we can for sure use a segment trigger fragmentary now we have to return an answer for all the queries of type 1 and what's the answer what's the number of peaks in that sub array now If we take very basic example, if I would have only given the query one, give me the number of peaks in the range L to R, then I know that I will have to go and find if I would have computed the peaks like this. Like for example, for this array, I would have computed the peaks pre-hand, as in like beforehand, uh, and I would have made the array like this. Now you can see that. I will start comparing with the one. One is it more than the side? It is not. Okay, he is not a peak. He is not a peak. Four is it more? Yeah, it is. Okay, he is a peak. Uh, two is it more? No, it is not. Okay, he is not a peak. So that is it. You see, when I said that is it, I I I said that I did not touch the extreme elements because the problem itself mentioned that the first and the last element of any array it can be a sub array also. any array or a sub array it cannot be a peak so very obviously that if i am given the range l comma r if i could have computed this peak array beforehand i could have only gone and queried that find me the range sum in the range l plus 1 to r minus 1 you remember like you know why i did l plus 1 r minus 1 because i know i have to exclude the peak elements okay so i'm done and i can just simply go and simply hit a query and query this think peak array i have built and find the answer but if i did not have a query of type 2 which means update if i did not have any any update i could have simply used a prefix sum technique but if i have update i know i have to either use my fragmentary or a segmentary considering that we have a segmentary template which require only four line change so let's use the segmentary here now if i am using a segmentary i can simply do a range query as in the range sum and find the number of ones in the range any range l minus 1 to r minus 1 i will be sorted but the biggest issue is query of type 2 when you have to update now when you have to update anything let's see how will how that update will impact your nums array or to be more precise how will it impact your peak so considering initially in the very beginning i have the array nums 3 1 4 2 5 as you can see 3 1 4 2 and 5 i have built let's say as a form of a graph 
and I can easily see that I have to ignore the extreme elements and in the middle elements I have okay I can see I have only one peak and that's what my array is also saying as soon as a query of type 2 will come how will my answer be impacted for sure let's say right now my peak is this value if I would have bought a query of a type 2 and I would have mentioned okay earlier that this was the array now a query of type 2 came and it said okay for the index 2 modify that value 4 and make it as something else if it would have asked me to make it as 6 it would have again remained a peak if it would have asked me to modify it and make it as a 3 or let's say 0 so it could have reached to a value of zero, although 0 is, not, 0 is not possible but still imagining if it would have asked me to reduce it a lot then it did not remain a peak so Aryan are you saying that if I am calling an update query on an index 2 and asking him to update to a new value again this is the update which means override that is very important because in the code in the template there is a variation either it's a update override or actually a addition but i'll show you that but so far you guys are in are you saying that on an update of index 2 will only that index will change because earlier it was a peak but now depending upon what the new value is it can become a non-peak element so it can become a zero rn you are saying is the id only affected element i will say not why not because what if this value would have been here which means this would have been very less value nums of zero same way if this would have been very less value very less value so earlier imagining it was a peak this value was a peak but then if it changed if it became even lesser even lesser than the right but more than my left so you see that you will see that this value will now become a peak which means id plus one id plus one can now become a peak right and same way if i would have reduced a lot then id minus one could also have become a peak thus we realized one thing that on changing my nums of i to a new value i can affect my nums of i minus one and nums of i plus one as in not nums of i i will affect their peak values they can either become a peak or they will not become a peak that is how i can easily say that on every update of nums of id to value my peak array for sure id value can change id minus one value again that's a peak array i'm saying can change or id plus one peak value can change no other than them will change i cannot say that okay id as you can see id is this id plus one is this i will not say that this will change no this can change only when their neighbor change and their neighbor are not changing they are still white so we realize one fact that on every update i have to just update two i have to update only two more values so although it's a point update but it's a point update on three indexes id id minus one and id plus one that's it so i can easily say that a query of range query will take log n time because of my segment tree and my range point update will take three into log n time that's it cool uh, let's see with an example that uh, how this could have been done so considering if we go back to the main example we had our value like these and it was high right it was high again extreme values will always be not peak values so no worries on that part so in the very beginning i had a one here now i received a query by saying bro you have a query of type 2 type 2 query at index 3 update it to 4 at index 3 i update it to 4 so now for sure 4 i will firstly check is he a candidate for a peak okay this is the id this is my id is he the candidate for the peak uh obviously he can be when i say candidate i mean he should not be the extreme end element if he's an extreme end element for sure he's never a peak id is never a peak so he is not end element so he is a peak he he can be a good candidate for peak now if he's a good candidate compare it with left and right is he more no it is exactly same 
4 4 he is exactly same so this id even after updating it he is not a peak so override it again when i say override override it i don't care whatsoever existing value i had previously i don't care override it with the value of 0 okay but i told you that id plus 1 and id minus 1 will also be impacted now id plus 1 it is the extreme end element of the array for sure it will always remain 0 so make it a 0 itself now id minus 1 check it again is it a peak or not if you check it again okay compare it 4 compare it with 1 yeah it is still a peak compare it with 4 again is it a peak no it is not a peak so override override id minus 1 to 0 now this is the state okay now okay next next thing next query query of type 1 range 0 to 4 range 0 to 4 sorry okay range 0 to 4 is the sub array range 0 to 4 0 to 4 is the sub array I told you if the range is 0 to 4 you can only consider the peaks in the range from L plus 1 to R minus 1 so this is the range which I should take the range sum as and the range sum is 0 thus the answer is 0 for me cool and again I have to only return the answer for type 1 query now let's see one more dry run for type 2 query again for just to summarize you have a point update in which you will update index i index i minus 1 and index i plus 1 it's a point update so you can simply use a fenwick tree also because fenwick tree can also again fenwick tree works for all three things but it's a simple range sum so range sum which means range query you can also do a range query of l plus 1 to r minus 1 with a fenwick tree also so in this case you can use both fenwick tree and segment tree for both of your both of your queries now you can simply see that we also have a fenwick tree crash course and we also have a segment tree crash course but i will say for contest and stuff use segmentary because it is very again just it's just a two line change in the segmentary template and we have done eight plus problems okay sorry 10 plus problems we have done in this segmentary crash course just just two our crash course cool so let's do the same thing with the example two we have this array we build the initial peak array as you can see extreme ones are never peak one it is less than neighboring okay not a peak four it is more yeah he is a peak two not a peak for sure one not a peak for sure okay now this is the initial array build first query was a type 2 query saying update the index 2 with a value of 4 index 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 index 2 with a value of 4 okay 4 was already there but no worries i'll still do okay this is id i'll still make it sure that okay i'll update peak of id peak of id minus 1 and peak of id plus 1 peak of id he is 4 is he more yeah he is more so he will i will override that to one i'll go to id minus one make sure id minus one should not be the extreme end values yeah he is not so compare it uh, with both of them um one it is not for sure one uh, it is still less than four and one is less than uh, my four also so for sure he i will override it to zero two again override it to zero because he's not a peak okay this is done peak value updated right next query 0 to 2 just query 0 to 2 0 to 2 this range if i query one of this range i know i have to query l plus 1 r minus 1 because extreme end of the sub array also is not a peak so i will query for this range only l plus 1 to r minus 1 it is a zero range sum is zero answer is zero for it okay 0 to 4 0 to 4 0 1 2 3 4 0 to 4 is this array but l plus 1 r minus 1 will be 1 2 3 now for 1 2 3 range sum is 1 answer is 1 for him thus the answer for this query will be 0 and 1 if i show you 0 and 1 that's the answer cool let's see the code it's exactly same we use the we'll use the exact same template for our segmentary just telling that uh, we have to do a range sum thus this is the range sum right okay one line changed now i showed you it's a, it's a simply update update is a point update but it's a override update right if I update it with the value 4, next time it is 5. So it is not 4 plus 5, it is 5, overridden. So, okay, it is an overridden value. If you are confused on what this entire thing is, go and watch that one video. 2 hours, done, completely done. And again, for the folks who are able to solve the fourth problem because of that segmentary template, please do comment down below. That will be very helpful. Now, coming, coming on, we just did an override update value. We just override 
and thus we are done with the segmentary code that's it that's it just a simple change in the template that's it now uh, coming on with the actual code itself we build the segmentary of size n because we have the peak array of size n now i firstly build the initial peak values if something is a peak if some index is a peak starting from index 1 to index n minus 2 i will check if it's a peak if yes then update that with the value 1 again again it's a update value with the value 1 now when the initial peak array building is done i will simply go on to all of my queries on the type 1 query i have to just simply tell in the range l plus 1 to r minus 1 what is the range sum so l plus 1 i'll check r minus 1 for sure l plus 1 should be more than sorry less than or equal to r minus 1 only then it's a valid range if that's the case simply go and do a range sum query l plus 1 to r minus 1 find the value of that segmentary and return that value as a true or like again as a whatsoever value is there whatsoever range sum is there is there range sum is there so that's your range sum for sure if i have l and r as same let's say 2 comma 2 so i know that uh, l plus 1 will be 3 r minus 1 will be 1 so re re return a 0 itself there is both like it's the end element itself right that's the reason now uh when the range 1 query is done range 2 query simply says find the current id nums of id i know the previous id will be impacted and the next id will be impacted so i will impact the previous and the next id now i can impact the previous id only and only when it is less than so it is more than my one more than equal to my one so if my previous id is more than equal to my one i will check if that previous id has become a peak now so i will just again this is peak is simply comparing if that specific index id is a peak or not that's it it will re return a true or a false dependingly depending upon that so i simply say if that previous id is a peak update it to one else zero if the next id again next id next possible id last index is not the possible index so next id is a peak updated to a one if not zero if the id itself is a peak or has become a peak okay update to one else zero and again make sure should not be the extreme elements ultimately when these three are done we are good to say we will have our answer because we are pushing answer in every step and this is your answer so firstly building the segmentary itself o of n log n on every query i am simply doing a log n time because again this code we have used is a template for everything if they would have asked for range update also that would have still worked cool space for segmentary is 4n but yeah it's o of n itself and that is your timing for comedy cool i hope you got it and see you in the next video until then goodbye take care and see you guys in the next video until then goodbye take care again join discord for updates for discussions and 45k karwa dena use well bye bye take care